know what day it is and before we get started i would appreciate it if all of you humans would smash that like button hit me with a subscription and don't forget to turn on those notifications because i'm here twice a week and with that said let's get on with the events shall we now i've been reading some weird uh weird things i like to read about technology that's coming out and all these other things like um, i like to see what's the next gadgets coming out as the next person i'm sure there's a lot of people that do whether it's game consoles games uh, you know, uh, office things, you know, uh, software, any, any kind of things out there. I like to see all these cool little gadgets, even like just stupid little toys you can have on your desk that do cool shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Does anything, I like all the cool gadgets, you know? And, uh, lately I've been reading around and I've been seeing some of these new things about science. I was looking at gadgets and then this article caught my attention and it kind of freaked me out. It freaked me out because it was talking like real shit, like about our future that um, I wasn't really ready for. It's kind of like a sucker punch. It was like I let, came out of left field to me because I should be hearing about this in our news, but unfortunately we don't. And I'm really share with you humans because I think a lot of people should be hearing about this, you know, and it's really, it's really kind of creepy to me. I don't know if we should run for the hills because I don't think it matters because it has to deal with technology. They'll find us. <laughs> so I was reading and they were talking how the world is changing. Obviously, it is changing. It's a lot of it's, everything's changing. And so are, they say like society also is changing. And I could agree with that. It seems like it's like uh, it wants to it wants to change and people don't want it to change. And it's like in that transition. But it's a really rough transition. It's like a big, messy, big, messy transition into whatever this new change is. So I'm reading on and they're talking about um, all these big companies are like investing in in all this um, money to change our society. And I'm like, wait, what, what, what? So I had to reread it. And they're like, yes, all these big giant companies, these big corporations, I don't know, the guys like the big people, the big cheeses, you know, the ones that probably own all kinds of shit, are investing all this money into changing our society. And they're using the term um, with, um, they were using the term transhumanism. That's right, humans. <laughs> Transhumanism. And if you aren't familiar with that, I am not either. It's pretty new to me, <laughs> it's pretty, but it's really creepy when you talk about it. It's like, uh, you know, converting humans into, you know, not all the way human anymore, you know, whatever form it may be. And they're saying there's a lot of developments going on today with all our new technology. And it's jumping in vast speeds at like, at, you know, making giant leaps and bounds at crazy speeds. And, um civilization like society is just super unstable and they're real it's really unstable and they feel like it's on edge and they don't know where the tipping point is but this technology seems to just be like you know like i said just running rampant gaining crazy speeds and advancements and so with this transhumanism stuff science took like augmentations like to the next level and like i'm not just talking about like like implants, like I'm just talking about like ass implants and titties, you know what I'm saying? Like they took augmentation to like the next level and I'm part of the construction fi uh, field, you know, and I, I see a lot of uh, cool new innovations on that, you know, like they got like cool Iron Man suits, you know, like for people to make people stronger and to not, like, not hurt your back and do all these things They're like, and they got all these, you know, things for people that are um, disabled. You can put these suits on and they're and they're learning, you know, getting all the kinks out of this technology. So where people that were in wheelchairs are being able to stand and walk and do things, you know, they, I seen the one with the young boy, they had him stand up and he kicked a soccer ball, you know, and imagine where, and that was like years ago. So imagine what the advancements they made now. I wonder if he can do any more moves, you know, if the machines are, are more advanced, you know, it's just crazy how technology is taking leaps and bounds. It's scary and cool at the same time. So they're saying they want to use transhumanism. Like I said, they want to take augmentation to the next level. And like I said, I'm not talking about ass and titties. I'm talking about, like like I said, things that will help people that are disabled. Um, let's see, uh, like those, um, like the wearables, like those, uh, we're not talking like, it's like way beyond the Fitbit. You know what I'm saying? This thing is going to do more than shake your blood pressure and shit like that. 
and know when your heart rate's up and how many steps you took. We're talking about like crazy, crazy as technology, man. Like, I mean, like figure like, um, let's see, like a wearable, um, like now you could put up like a microchip in your head or something. You know what I'm saying? And maybe you could wear that or you got this headband or like your phone. You don't even got to carry your phone no more. You could put a contact lens in your eye and that's your camera and that's your phone and get all your messages from your contact lens. You know, all these things are in development right now. Like there was so many lists of all these, you know, crazy advancements and what they're doing. Like and the contact lens is one of them. Like I said, you put a contact lens in, you get all your messages, you have a camera. If you want to video record, it records audio, video, everything like feel fully. It sees what you see basically. And they have all these, I mean, it's just insane when I was reading this stuff, like, oh my gosh, <laughs> you know, it's like way more than just titties and asses these days. You know, people are just getting crazy implants. And um, people that have to get organ replacements, you know, that stuff's taking leaps and bounds. Um, what about IVF, like in vitro fertilization? You know, like when people are going in to have children, now they're able to control like like the sperm they want, you know, the, or the embryos. They can pick out the good embryos and make sure your baby can be like a genius or they can make like a whole groups of geniuses or something. By picking out the good ones and take, and not taking the bad ones. And I'm like, man, that's pretty creepy. And they were saying they could eliminate, like, people that have, like, you know, mental flaws and, or, or, or certain disabilities and things like that when they're from, from birth. And I'm like, that's where it gets kind of creepy, man. Like, these guys are starting to play God in weird ways, you know, because sometimes you got to just, like, take the brakes in, right? Like I said, they should pump the brakes a little bit on some of these things. But I feel like they're amping it up. Like, they're amping it up at a time where nobody's looking. I feel like because with all the kids, like, you know, like they say, like, society is really unstable. And I agree with that. It seems like it's unstable. Just riot. The people just waiting to riot and loot and, you know, do all this crazy stuff all the time. Go crazy at any at a moment's notice and just start a group about it, like a movement about it, like at any second. You know, and it's just like, it's just weird, man, when they're like, you know, trying to control like, like I said, they basically, they're trying to it, like change the society, you know, and basically if, like, if you're, ba if you're going in to have your first child, you know, you're excited or maybe you're not excited, you're scared and you go in there and get your visits and they're going to be like, well, you know, we're having trouble having children. We need some assistance. And they're going to be like, okay, we picked out a few uh, doctor ones that could be doctors or high performance athletes. And we don't know, we these things are perfect. These are perfect embryos, you know, and then next they're going to be picking out the right sperms. They're going to be like, these guys right here are the champs, you know, and they're just going to drop those guys in and uh, instead of putting the whole group in, you know, they're probably, they're just, that's how advanced the shit's going to be. It's going to be straight up like all we need is this guy and that you in the rest is going to be like, man, shit, you know, they're going to have to haul gate. So, you know, who knows where they get, if they get recircumfiled, refrozen or, or, you know what I'm saying? Or that nut just go in the wind, you know, this is wasted nuts. The rest of the nuts just wasted. We, I don't know, but the, like the way they're playing over here, you just don't know, man. If they're controlling all this, they could be controlling that too. They can control the nuts. It's kind of creepy. It's kind of creepy. Because what if they mess up? Like, what if they make the like they pick the wrong embryo, embryo, the wrong embryo, and it's like a, an evil genius. Like they said, it was so perfect, you know. But when it came out, it was it couldn't handle all the pressure. You know what I mean? It was like the Anakin. You know, like they, it had that uh, too much anger inside or something. Something happened. And it remembered like when it was born and didn't like all that trauma or something and like held that against the world. Like the pain it went through because it remembered its birth or something. And it was all crazy and it held that grudge. <laughs> and this baby became an evil genius. And like it went over it against the world. You know what I'm saying? It was crazy. It'd be, it'd be crazy, scary shit. You just don't know what you could be doing. And uh, they're talking about BM, uh, BMI, like those BMIs. Uh, what is that? Brain Machine Interface. I was like, what the heck's the BMI? I heard of IBMs. And so they were like, and BMs, you know what I'm saying? But they were like, uh, yeah, this is a BMI, and it stood for Brain Machine Interfaces. And like, like you hear that shit that Elon Musk is working on, like the neural links, and you hear like uh, Facebook, the CIA, and like Elon Musk are working on these like brain chips. All three of these companies. Why is Facebook working on a brain chip? That's another reason. Why why do they need to work on a brain chip? Why don't we leave it to the government? <laughs> or something. It's just weird. But anyways, they're all working on these chips that you can put in your brain 
And basically, you can go in any country or anywhere. You can communicate with anybody. There'd be no communication barrier anywhere you went, as long as you had probably internet, of course. But then I'd be pretty, like I said, you got those hackers right now when there was that big uh, cyber threat that's going around. And you, you got the opportunity. There's a chance of that happening, too. Like, you got this cyber thing in your head, and, like, people's brains just get hacked. And what if they make, like, control that can control you with, via the internet? Like, if somebody can just hack into your brain chip. And that's what can get messed up again. You know, that's what people get all messed up all over again. It'd be messed up like crazy humans running around like and just like with laptops and shit and game controllers fucking around with you. It would be like that movie gamer. <laughs> It'd be like real people. When they would use them prisoners. And you would be prisoners in, in a sense. Because you wouldn't be able to control it if they hacked your brain chip. It would be cool maybe to be able to like you know, have that matrix ability, you know, all of a sudden, you know, Kung Fu or like, I always wanted to learn to play the piano. And then all of a sudden you can play the piano. I mean, those things are innocent, fun things. You know, I just want to do this. I wanted to learn, you know, play the guitar, play some music or how to paint. And you can master those things by being able to download them. But then if somebody on the wrong end, on the bad side, wants to get crazy, they can just hack your brain and just, you know, do whatever they want, man. Make a whole crime syndicate. Out of people just hacked, and you wouldn't even know who it was because it would be one person or a group of people controlling another big group of humans via the internet connected to the brain chip or the BMI. Controlling that brain machine interface. I don't know, humans. I wouldn't want to do it. Unless I knew, like, for sure. Like I said, I think I would want to do it for music purposes because I'm in the early phases right now learning guitar. Yeah, I'm a late bloomer. I always wanted to learn. Um, I was always into like the producing and recording end of the things and like the digital side of music, which I'm okay with. But I always want to learn guitar. So right now I'm in the early stages of guitar and it's pretty difficult. And I and for me, you know, I, I, I'm having, to, you know, I'm, I'm getting there, I'm learning a little slow, slow but steady. But like if I could just download it, I would learn in minutes. It would just be like a couple minutes. So the download's done and I'm jamming, you know, so. It's kind of it's kind of weird and creepy, man. But it, like I said, I'll be afraid of the you know the bad side of it when, when the crime gets involved, and you got to worry about these people hacking your brain chip, because that's when they it could get bananas. And you wouldn't know who to catch. It'd be hard for them to catch because it'd be a di- they'd be hiding behind the digital people. You'd be arresting all the people committing the crimes, and they're not they're being controlled. That'd be a wild goose chase. It'd be a hard, it'd be a hard game, man. They'd be seeing, they'd, they'd be into some sci-fi movie shit there. Like we'd have to have these like crazy sci-fi, like every cop would have to have this like tech background because you'd have to be tracking people on the computer and having to hack into, you know, different databases to try to track somebody. You have to have these super high advanced cops. So that's what I see happening if that stuff comes involved. And everybody knows that there's big advancements in v- in virtual reality, like VR <clears throat> is going crazy right now. Some of it's bananas. You can't even tell what's what. And you see people in those reaction videos where they're freaking out just in some of those digital worlds. And it's no joke, man. Some of the games they got out, some of the interactive films. I mean, it's getting re- it's getting ridiculous. You know, it's in the crossovers. And and um, I think it would benefit people too. It'd make us more like empathetic in the future, because with VR you can use it for certain other experiences, like maybe seeing seeing a certain situation in the eyes of another individual. You know, if somebody was in um, experiencing like some racism or or some sim- like some things like that or a discrimination of some sort, um, VR could be used in those kind of ways in the future to make people more empathetic in the in the pet in the future. That way you could see like where somebody was coming from. Like I don't understand this and that where you guys were in an argument and maybe in like the new court cases that get you in court and they put you in the VR and now you're looking through the eyes of the person that was the victim and you can kind of feel where, you know, if they were targeted at some things or some things happened, this and that and vice versa. And I think that's going to be part of the future, man, because the way this uh, stuff was going on when I was reading all this, you know, this magazine, man, I was like, it was like nothing you can think of, like wasn't already in the works. And all this stuff is in the works. Like it's all coming, whether we want it or not. <laughs> it just got, it's on the way. It's on the way. So I think it's interesting, especially with the VR. Like when they broke down those in, those interesting scenarios, like I said, like uh, you could be in the in in 
you know, you know, when someone says you don't understand what it's like, or maybe we don't understand a hundred percent, but that would give us a really good perspective. And I think it'd be really valuable in the future. And I think it would be, it would open our eyes to a lot of people, not just, uh, not just here in America. Like I think we're in globally, like wherever people have these oppression, you know, these problems, um, you know, over, over all, all, all disputes all over the place. I don't know what your thoughts on that would be. I know, I know that's a strange vent and all, but I was just really interested in this because it just caught my attention and I just wanted to share that. Um, and it's kind of spooky and exciting at the same time. Um, I love technology. And like I said, it's just a crazy how fast it just seems like recently it's going like super fast. Like, like it hit like almost like breaking the sound barrier fast. There's just all these cool things coming out. Every time you see whatever's on TV or we search on the internet, there's a lot of cool, crazy new things just coming out. And like I said, it's really creepy and cool at the same time. But I'm afraid of our brains getting hacked either way. Either way. Either way. Same thing with like those, um, you know, like um, the augmentations. Like if people are going to start putting not only just brain chips in them, it brings me back to like Back to the Future. You remember like Biff and all those guys when he went to the future and he had the jacket that automatically dried and my man had like the robot arm to be stronger and stuff like they're having that stuff right now. Like I said, I see in the, in the construction, the X suit, X suits, man. You know, it's a, it's for it's construction. It makes you lift things easier, all these crazy things. And then there's things for people that, like I said, that are disabled. And all, those things are crazy. Like, or I wonder if it'll, it'll cross over in, in, the ath, in, in, the athlete, in the athletics. Sorry about that. Almost like a porky pig there for a minute. <laughs> Into athletics, you know, like um, maybe football or basketball, you know, where a guy gets a knee replacement. Or in football, there's a lot of injuries. In hockey, there's a lot of injuries. You know, where these guys would be sort of bionic, you know. Would it make the sports a little interesting? Will they allow it? You know, what about in the fighting sports, you know, like MMA and boxing? Excuse me. Or like even like bare knuckle boxing and all those uh, fighting type sports. You know, will they allow it in those? Or, you know, would they cross it over into like the where they, where they have the horse racing with animals? Or the greyhounds. You know, it could get interesting when uh, when it's like the norm. Like if it becomes like somebody, like everybody's starting to do it, it'll be, it'll get real interesting because it would have to level the playing ground. Like right now, there's a struggle between uh, representation and some people trying to be um, equals and stuff like that. And there's, a, you know, it's a battle going on right now. It's a tough, it's a, tr- it's a transition. Right now, that's a, tra- it's a, it's a transition. That one's getting messy because it's like a, You know, humans are trying to, you know, everybody wants to, you know, be accepted who they are. And I think when when this transition comes in with the machines and stuff or like if we start being like sub bionic and, you know, things like that, I think that's going to be another crazy transition because people won't be willing to accept that as well. They'll be like, will they see that unfairness um, also or, or will it be allowed for everyone so that everybody can level that playing field? But I almost think. If they do, like, let us become sub-bionics, uh, they let it into sports, in the Olympics, or whatever, I think at that point, the, lev- the there is no playing field. I mean, the playing field is just one field then. Because, I mean, if you're using machinery, I mean, whether you're or whatever you are, um, you're going to be strong. You know, it's, it's just the machines. You know, if it's if you're part machine, then it's going to be a strong machine. So I think the playing field would be pretty level. But to get there, I think it would be another transition. A lot of people with a lot of pushback, um, a lot of disagreement. Maybe some protesting, a lot of this, this, and that, you know, till they get things moving in the direction they would want. But uh, in my my opinion, it could be interesting, you know, because a lot of guys um, and women, uh, men and women, um, put their their bodies through a lot when it comes to a lot, a lot of those sports, you know, whether they're doing like super physical sports or super active sports. Most of them, you know, all of them, whatever sport it is, from from A to Z, you know, all the sports, you know, those guys, guys and women. They put their bodies through a lot, whether it's wrestling, tennis, you know, basketball, football, hockey, um, international football, soccer. You know, we call soccer the international football over there, uh, rugby, everything. I mean, sports that I can't even think of, badminton, you know, it's, uh, these things are, pu- are, dueling, are putting stuff into people's, you know, joints and legs and ligaments. 
So when they let that stuff come into in sports, I think it would be a tough transition. And then I, but then I think of the, you know, the playing field gets pretty level when we're all part machine. You know, it wouldn't be a long time after that where it's like the real steel matches start happening. And Hugh Jackman comes out again. <laughs> but anyways. I was also reading some other things about AI. You know, a lot of, a lot of um, things about AI um, caught my ear, got me even more afraid. And wanted to, you know, sound the alarm, start running, or start packing my, my uh, bug out bag. Wanted me to become a prepper. And starting to learn how to dig really fast to make holes underground. <laughs> because I was reading some facts about AI. Like, I got a little five little facts about AI that like, could be a warning sign that, man, this could be a warning sign that uh, these guys are coming to be a danger to the humans. And these guys, I mean, I mean the, the AI. And they're all like, there's three types of AI. Man, I don't even know. I don't even believe you. When I used to read early articles in the early uh, development stages of like artificial intelligence, you would hear of all these crazy programs just taking off on their own and going wild. <laughs> it would just be going wild. Even um, the speaking software that they were creating for Stephen Hawking would even say that there was some crazy glitches happening to that stuff where you know, the machinery or the software, the AI software was saying things that he didn't really want to say. And so they were, and I don't know if that's true or not. I'm just saying those were stories that I've read, you know. And so AI, there are these five facts here I found that could be, you know, this could be like, I don't know, man, like warning signs. This could be like warning signs because this stuff is like beyond development. This stuff is like happening already. Like, there, I mean, it's even evolving and developing as it is and growing every year because it's artificial intelligence. So here are these five facts that I believe are warning signs that we should take heed, humans. One of them. Here's number one. Elon Musk says that AI will cause World War III. And this dude, like I said, is always weird. Like he always wants to tell us something else. He always got to dumb down all his sentences. You know, he's kind of that weird, smart, maybe people think he's not human, you know. And he's the one who said, like, he, and this is, like, you know, fact number one, okay? And like, he's the one that said that, like, our, our, our human, humanity itself is unstable. And I don't know, he's a pretty smart dude, so, like, that stuff kind of freaks me out. Or are these, like, scientists that we see all in the media nowadays, you know, now that everything's so media-driven, like, are all these big scientists like Elon Musk and Bezos and all these guys with the big money, are they like puppets just like the presidency? Like, the way they like the presidents seem like they're not always really in charge with these, all this big circus around them. There's all this quick stuff in the media. And, like, are these like these guys like the face of, like, the science? You know, I was like, you know, because I remember one guy, I think it was Bill Burr, made a funny uh, joke about Steve Jobs, rest in peace, about, you know, he didn't do it by himself. You know, he went in this office and said, I want, you know, you know, it was a really funny bit the way he did the story, you know, uh, something about I want all my songs on this phone and, you know, nobody's going home till Christmas or whatever until I get all my shit, you know, blah, blah, blah. So he went off on something like that. And <laughs> I just wonder if like all these all these big people we see in the media now are just puppets, like just the faces we see. But all the real scientists doing all the work and doing all these crazy inventions aren't even allowed to see people because of the secrecy of the stuff they're working on. They're like, oh, no, you don't, you don't see nobody. You sign that line. You know, you walk out, they put you outside like you're in jail. You know, you're like, you know, you get a little sunlight. And then uh, they give you a little fake ecosystem and food pellets and stuff to keep you just doing science. But the ones we see, I don't think, are the real scientists. This is my opinion. You know, this is my opinion. But this dude says that AI is going to cause World War Three, like, they're going to say we should be living a certain way. We're probably going to not want to. We're probably going to be like whatever and drink beer and do whatever the stuff we want to do. And, you know, we're already not listening. <laughs> so but we're not going to listen to the robots either. So he thinks they're going to start World War Three. That's kind of crazy. That's kind of creepy, you know. But anyways, here's my other fact. It can pretend to be you. 
AI can pretend to be you. It can, as and any human, however you represent yourself, however, whatever, all it needs is 60 seconds of your voice and it can pretend to be you. All it needs is 60 seconds of you saying any words. It doesn't matter what words they are and it will mimic your voice almost identical. This, this technology is so creepy, humans. I heard them do this recently. There's a new Amy Winehouse album coming out. And I don't know if this is the same stuff they're using. But people made this program where you can talk to dead people even. They're using like they're they're doing this with like dead relatives. People are getting audio and sending them audio and people are putting through this AI and the AI program is like making this message and uh from past loved ones, which is creepy. Um good. I understand if it may gives you closure, whatever. I just think this technology is creepy. Whoa. Okay. Like, so I, there's actually stuff you can look up right now. Um, they used, uh, Amy Winehouse's voice, uh, Kurt Cobain's and Jimi Hendrix are the ones that I heard. Excuse me. And they're using artificial intelligence and they use their audio patterns and they use their algorithms of their voices and their, their different changes and their pitches. And they literally made new music with their with artificial intelligence with it made the lyrics the music it was really creepy stuff and if you hear this man some of them are pretty creepy because you can tell some of them are authentic you can see though you can hear that okay that's not Kurt Cobain and then there's some parts where like whoa that's Kurt Cobain you know what I mean and same with the um Amy Winehouse sounds really good hers are like creepy good they're pretty close you know like her voice pitches were so good that I think they're using this for this new album, supposedly, that they're putting out. Maybe for some of the missing audio, they're probably using this AI to, they use the AI probably to complete this album. Because when I heard those three samples, hers probably out of all three sounded the best, like sounded the closest to her than all of them. And in the Kurt Cobain one, there was like a couple songs. Um, some of them sounded real cheesy, but there were some pieces of the song where you're like, whoa, you know, it got a little goosebumps. Um, you got goosebumps definitely with Amy Winehouse, like every time you heard it, it was like, whoa, it's kind of, you know, it just didn't have like, um, her ad lib or like her accent, you know, like when she would, um, roll off on a singing note, like I can't do it. You know how she would extend a little singing note and do these little, you know, certain little ad libs, uh, a special little piece of what she does, you know, her flavor. It was just more clean singing notes. And, um, it's just really creepy. And then the Jimi Hendrix one, the same thing. There was a, some like where you're like, whoa, what's this? And then there was a couple pieces in there where you're like, oh, my gosh, it's, it's, it sounds like him, you know. So I think they're using this for this new album. You know, I don't know if they're doing this for that new Juice World album because rest in peace. I know he's got a new one coming out as well. And I don't know if they're trying to use this um, same stuff to put it in and maybe disguise it with the auto tune. But um, I don't know. And it's, it's really creepy technology because it can pretend to be you. It has, it only needs 60 seconds of audio and it probably needs less. I would say it probably needs less, but it, either way, that's bananas. So you've seen the movie I Robot, you know, the ladies got one, the Will Smith grandma's got one in the house. You know, people are, the one lady's got one in her house. She's in the shower and, you know, it, 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 she hears it like hang up a voicemail or hang up the telephone and, you know, stuff like that, man, like. And then, or what if it answers the phone for you while you're in the shower when it's time for the robot takeover? That scene could have went multiple ways, you know, like she's in a shower, the phone rings, the robot answers, and it's your voice, you know, or it's my voice. You know, I'm in a shower and the robot's supposed to be in there making sure my game's DVR or make sure the boxing match is going on. And I'm going to get out here and, and check my oven for my pizza pockets or my Tortino's. You know, check my tortinos or pizza pockets, is, you know, make sure they ain't burning and I'm going to come out, you know. And they answer the phone with my voice and they're like, hello. They're like, hey, man, how's everything going, man? Oh, pretty good, man. Everything's going. All right, we're all locked down. We can't leave. All these people got it. And then their phone cuts off. Everything's fine, man. I don't know what you're talking about, man. You're crazy. And it hangs up with my voice. And I'm in the shower not knowing nothing. Or did I shut off the shower again in time just like the movie and I, I got the door cracked and I hear him hang up my shit. And I'm like, oh, my God, it just did my voice. Dude, I would pee myself. I don't know. I'd be so scared. I wouldn't know what to do, man. I wouldn't know what to do. I wouldn't know what to do, but I'd be terrified. It could pretend to be you. Whew. So not only could it pretend to be you, 
This gets even creepier. It can predict your thoughts through human algorithm patterns, which is why I feel like it doesn't need 60 seconds. It can predict your thoughts through patterns of, so you ever hear like when parents, when I was younger, they'd be like, oh man, I've been there and done that. You know, you made a song about that back in the day. I've been there. I've done that. You know what I'm saying? Because people done did it and done that. There's never been, it's never been done. You're never been like the first one. The first one of doing all these excuses that people used to make up, there's been somebody way before us that started those excuses, and they just came on down the line. They just survived through time, to the, to the test of time, all these, all these excuses. We're not the first ones. So through all these patterns we have, it's pretty, it, they make us so predictable to a artificial intelligence, it's almost like they're psychic, like they can almost read your mind. And they could predict your thoughts. Through these exams they were showing in this article, like they were just blowing everybody's minds. They were damn near thinking these things are psychic. And it was just going off of our patterns. And it's like, man, we really are like a repetitive type of species because they say history repeats itself. And like, you know, they say all this crazy stuff. And you're like, oh, no, no, it don't. And then they say something about something about 80, every 80 years, there's like a big battle and like. And then you look at the map and, or the timeline. It's like shit is happening every 80 years. And there's like 80 years coming up. It's like, oh, shit, is this really going to happen? Like, so you don't know, man. And this thing's all through our patterns. And it's making it seem like it's psychic, you know. And it's making it like predict our thoughts through all of our same answers we've done. Over the time, we just went for the same cheese. In the same rat maze, we was going for the same cheese pocket. That's crazy and creepy. It's crazy and creepy. But that's not all. That is not all. The last one. I saved it for I saved the best one for last. Oh wait. Wait, 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 wait. That's not the last one. I guess the second to last one. It says they can master anything. So not only can it pretend to be you, what if it masters your voice so much and it makes it like you better than you? You know, like something crazy like and then they can master like how to make skin. And, uh, you know, make your body, like, a, a whole body, another you. And that's where it gets creepy. But that's not the last one, like I said. But they, they, they can master anything. So after they pretend to be you, they will master everything about you. Like, everything, all your characteristics, which would be even creepier. Oh, my goodness, that's even creepier. I didn't even look at it that way. They could master you. And pretend to be you. Wow. Now let's say you guys was on the same team. You and your AI robot were like going to work together. The AI robot says, I do need you for some things, but I know I don't need you for many things, but I do need you for some things. So we will coexist. I will go to your job. <laughs> I will go to work and go do the stuff we got to do that the AI stuff's got to do. You go do what you got to do, and we will coexist. Or will it make you, like, excel at your job? Could you, like, coexist and listen to this AI, and it could just make you an awesome employee at the job you're at? Maybe it just helps you climb the ladder. It just tells you, like, all right, you got to dress this way. You should act this way. Tell me how your experiences was. And it's almost like you got a free psychiatrist, and the AI is explaining, like, through your patterns, what if you do this and this and this? And it shows you your whole algorithm. And if he changes your whole patterns, maybe that was like the best thing for you. And this AI didn't have no negative energy for you. And it set up your whole future and you changed the game and became successful with this AI. What if there was like a, you know, if it was like a 50-50, you had some that were, you know, trying to dominate, but then you had some that had compassion. You know, you had these one program AI. So I think that would be interesting when, if Elon Musk was correct about the war, like I think we would have some of them allies. Because I think some of the AI would have more sympathy than others. Depending on how they were, de they were developed, you know, through their time, what they were experiencing through their travels, you know, before they were, you know, migrating to help for the big battle that's coming. You know, like, now I'm just saying hypothetically, if, the, for they, were, if they had to travel through time, everybody had a different story. You know, everybody had a different story on their voyage. So it's different, I think different AI robots would have more sympathy than others. Some would be just out cold killers. Some would be different. Some would help humans. But here we go. 
my last and final piece. Not only will they master, they can pretend to be you and master anything, even mastering you. They, they they can can breed. breed. That's That's right, right, humans. humans. Artificial intelligence that can breed. As in reproduce. Oh my. What? What? They can reproduce. I don't think they're banging, okay? I think they created their own, like, digital artificial intelligence child. And it was more advanced than any hum- anything a human could produce. <laughs> what the- How do we... What do we... And when do we... Right? Right? That's really creepy, man. They, they say it created an AI child. And it was so advanced at, since, at, since the birth stages. Way more advanced than anything any humans ever made. It can make babies. It can make digital babies. If they learn how to make skin and all that stuff, which it probably did already, that stuff's in the works, man. We're going to have one of them Age of Ultron type of shit things happening. And I don't know if, if the plug even is going to matter. Like, when they say, like, I hope we're close to the plug, I don't think the plug is going to matter anymore. We already know about solar energy. We're not a type 1 civilization yet. But what if AI makes us that when they're starting to learn all this? Like, what if they make their body and their skin... Basically, the battery. Did I just give that out? Crap! Did I just give them the tip? And their algorithm already searched it, so they got the damn shit already. Before I even finish this episode and edit it, they already got it. I'm sorry, humans. I think I just gave them the tip. Shit. So if they master skin... And they make it a solar battery. Their whole skin is just a battery. And it runs their whole body all the time. We're in trouble, man. Because we won't be able to tell who it is. And I think they'll even know that we can check who sweats. It's like, oh, they don't sweat. These people will make them sweat. They'll make it. Because the technology is crazy. They already said they have holographic technology that can make real forms and cause real damage to things. Like they can make something, make a damn alligator man. Out of holograms and the hologram holographic alligator man can like walk in your living room and break your fucking picture window out in real life. And you would see the alligator guy doing it and you would be sitting here looking like a freako calling the news saying I saw alligator man break my picture window out. And it was all these little drones with holographic technology with this new shit that's actually like what you saw in Spider-Man is like really in development. And it's really in development. They are really making this, humans. (laughs) This is wild. This is just wild times. Like I said, technology is on a high-speed ramp-up race. And it's winning. It's winning by a lot. (laughs) We ain't even close. And that's what worries me, humans. I don't think the plug's going to matter. I don't think the plug's going to matter this time. We got to figure out something. And I don't even think EMP. We got to think of something even more clever than the EMP. I don't think the EMP is even going to help. I think they're going to be more advanced than the EMP. They're going to make some kind of shield or some shit. They learned about everything. Think about the octopus. Did I? Damn it. Did I just give them another fucking clue? Fuck. I'm sorry, humans. I can't... I. It just happens to me. I just think of things and I just blurt them out. I blurt them out and I can't help it. And I got to quit doing it. Or maybe I don't. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. Sometimes I think it's a good thing. More times it could be a bad thing. Like just now when I just gave them the tip. They're going to search this. Search octopuses. And that's how they're going to block the EMP blast. With a man. So like I said, I don't think the EMP would be enough. Or if we know where the plug is. And we need, I, I, I need, we need to figure out a new way to destroy some technology. Do we use some other technology to destroy technology? Or is it going to be some little simple invention that we have? 
something simple and plain that's just right in our face. I'm not sure, but we need to figure this out. And I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And with that said, this has been another episode of Meant to Vent. Till next time, humans. See ya.